guys today's video is going to be super interesting for you because i've received so many requests from you guys to make a video on consolidation so today we are going to talk about consolidated financial statements uh, before we get into the details you need to understand few key terms number one consolidation means we are preparing group accounts group account means uh, there are more than one entities whose results are being consolidated, put together. The standard uh, which governs uh, consolidation is IFRS 10, uh, Consolidated Financial Statements. Uh, the purpose of IFRS 10 is to establish uh, the basic principles for presentation and preparation of consolidated financial statements, especially when uh, a company controls more than one entities. So here we will be talking about uh, parent and subsidiaries. So we need to understand these key terms. Parent is a company which has invested into another company and the percentage of investment is, uh, let's say 50% or more. So whenever an entity, a company invest more than 50% in another company, the company in which the investment has been done is known as a subsidiary and the company which has done the investment is known as the parent. Now there is a possibility that uh, the parent company has invested not 50 but somewhere between 20 to 50 percent. Now this 20 to 50 percent when I'm talking about is investment or you can call it control means buying shares of a company which is around 20 to 50 percent of the total share capital. If that is the case, the investing company is not known as subsidiary, but it is known as an associate, which is dealt with IFIS 28, uh, investment in associate and joint ventures. But if the investment is less than 20 percent, the other company where we are investing is just considered as an investment and it goes in our current assets. So our focus is on IFRS 10, Consolidated Financial Statements. Here we got a simple question here where it says uh, Star purchased 100% share capital of Moon PLC. So this is Star Company, this is Moon PLC. Star Company is buying all the shares of Moon Company on January 1st, 2021 for 2.6 million cash. The statement of financial position of the two company immediately after acquisition is shown here. It means on January 1st, 2021, Star PLC is buying all the shares of Moon PLC. All right. And now what we have to do, because the parent has purchased 100% share capital of subsidiary, so uh, effectively it's one group, it's one entity. So IFRS 10 requires us to consolidate the results to, you know, make one financial statement, not for two different companies, but one company financial statement, which shows the results of the group, which is parent and subsidiary both. So what we need to look at here is, first of all, is what is the percentage of investment? This is very important. In any question, you look at how many shares are purchased. 100%, less than 100%, how much it is. So here it is 100%. All right. And the date of acquisition means the date of purchase of share is January 1st. And the financial statements which are given is also for January. Means as soon as the investment acquisition is done, the financial statements looks at the same on the same day. Means as the investment was done, as the shares were purchased, these financial statements are on the same date. So if you look very carefully, all these amounts are actually three zeros are eliminated here so that means this is 1.8 million three zeros are there so if you notice 2.6 million has been paid for the equity of moon company so this is exactly 2.6 and the parent is paying 2.6 for all the shares which means there is no question of goodwill goodwill is an amount which is paid over and above the fair value of the assets which you are purchasing so here the equity of Moon Company is 2.6 million 
and exactly 2.6 million is paid. Therefore, there is no goodwill. Otherwise, goodwill is calculated. As for IFRS 3 business combinations, we'll talk about it as the video progresses. So this is a very, very simple and straightforward question to begin with. The uh, statement of financial position for parent is given. The statement of financial position for subsidiary is given. Now we got to consolidate means we have to merge them. So what we're going to do is we are preparing a consolidated financial statement. So that is for the group. I'm writing assets. Assets, I will add property, plant and equipment for both. That's a golden rule. I'm writing property, plant and equipment. Take for parent 40,000. And for subsidiary 1800. So this will be 41,800. All right, please note this investment is cancelled out with the equity of the subsidiaries. It, it never comes in the consolidated financial statements. Let's talk about inventories. So in current assets, we have inventories 6,400 and 800 of subsidiary. So you add the inventories 7,200. We have receivables 5,350. So receivables for parent and subsidiaries would be added. Simple. Then we also have cash 1,250. 1,000 plus 250. So this will be 1,250. Add all of them. You get your total assets, which is 55,600. Okay. Coming to equity side, please remember whenever you're preparing consolidated statement of financial position, when you come to equity, take the share capital of parent 100%. So I'm writing here equities, share capital, I'm taking for parent, which is 100%. Whatever is given in the question, I'm taking that 10,000. Retain earnings of parent, of parent, 38,900. All right, we have accounts payable, take for both. Payables, 5,000 for parent, 2,520 for subsidiary, 5,520. And we have taxes payable as well, 1,100 of parent 80 of subsidiary so it's 1180 you add you get 55600 and that's all about this is total equities total assets what you need to remember here is that the investment in subsidiary is cancelled out with the equity of subsidiary both these never enters the consolidated financial position now I'm taking you guys to the next example which is little more advanced there are more elements in that in the second example, which I'm about to discuss, here we will talk about how to calculate goodwill, what are group reserves, how to calculate group reserves, what is non-controlling interest, how to calculate that, and then what if, if the percentage of acquisition is not 100%, if it is a different percentage, uh, what impact and effect it has on our calculations. So let's talk about scenario two. Now guys, in this question, what we are looking at is uh, the investment is 75%. It's not 100%. Here, Delta Company is purchasing 75% share capital of CELTA on January 1st. When, the, when CELTA's return earning was 2 million, means at the date of acquisition, when the parent is purchasing 75% shares of the subsidiary, they already have a return earning balance of 2 million. This retained earning balance at the date of acquisition is known as pre-acquisition. Means before the parent purchased the subsidiary, they already had some profit which totally belongs to them. Any profit earned after acquisition is known as post-acquisition and in post-acquisition, the parent will have 75% share and subsidiary will have the remaining 25% share. The other information here is the fair value of date of acquisition is 3 million. The fair value of NCI. It says fair value of NCI, okay, which is 3 million. Now, we need to understand what is NCI. NCI stands for non-controlling interest. In other words, if parent is buying 75% of subsidiary, the remaining 25% is known as non-controlling interest. Earlier, it was known as minority interest. 
Why minority? Because 75% majority shares is with the parent, minority shares are with the subsidiary. But the latest word as per IFRS 10 is non-controlling interest. So now what is happening? Investment is given 12,000, which is what the parent has paid for 75% uh, investment. Other assets are given, share capital given for both, retained earning. Now please remember this retained earning is one year after the acquisition. At the date of acquisition, the subsidiary has retained earning of just 2 million. And after one year, it is 4.4 uh, million. That means 2.4 million is the post acquisition retained earning. So here we need to see, is there an element of goodwill? What is goodwill? Goodwill is an amount which is paid over and above the fair value of assets which you are purchasing. So goodwill is dealt with IFRS 3 business combination. So we need to see how goodwill is calculated. In this question, there is an element of goodwill. Let's have a look at it. So I am doing working number one, which is for goodwill. How do we begin with? We begin with consideration. Consideration is what we are paying. We are paying 12,000. Okay, we are buying subsidiary, we are paying 12,000 for that. You also add fair value of NCI at date of acquisition, which is given 3 million. So first thing with consideration, you add fair value of NCI at date of acquisition. Uh, this comes to 15,000 less net assets acquired. Now, when you're talking about net assets, we're talking about share capital of subsidiary. Share capital of subsidiary is 8,000 and retain earnings at date of acquisition. Now, retain earning at date of acquisition was 2 million. So when you add these two, it is 10,000 and this amount is higher means the worth of the as net asset which we are acquiring is 10, but actually we are paying 15. So the difference 5,000 is known as goodwill. So this is a standard way of how to calculate goodwill. All Always write the consideration means how much you're paying, which is here. You will see investment in CELTA, which is 12,000. Then you look at the fair value of non-controlling interest at date of acquisition, add the two, and then compare it with the net assets of subsidiary at the date of acquisition. At the date of acquisition, the share capital of subsidiary was eight and the retained earning was two. So eight into makes 10, and this is quite high. That means the difference is goodwill. The next step, the next working is group reserves. What is group reserves? Group reserve means the reserves, the retain earning of parent as well as subsidiary. Okay, so we are looking at the group reserves. We are not looking at the 25% share of subsidiary that will come later. But let's see what is the reserves which are owned by the group. The best way to start this calculation which we are talking about group reserves. You can also call it group retain earnings. Both words are used. Always start with retain earnings of parent. Take 100% of that amount. See how much is the retain earning of parent, which is 3000. So I'm taking 3000. Then we need post acquisition retain earnings. Parent share in post acquisition retain earning. Understand retain earning as of now is 4,400. That is after one year. At the time of acquisition is was 2 million. So from 2 million, now it has become 4.4. So from 4.4 million, if we minus the pre-acquisition retain earning, this is pre-acquisition retain earning. Okay, we are left with 2.4. Now this 2.4 is the post acquisition retain earning means the profit earned by the subsidiary 
after parents acquisition so if parent has acquired 75 percent of subsidiary any profit they make after the date of acquisition parent has 75 percent share in that so this is the post acquisition retained earning and parent has 75 percent share in that which comes to 1800 so when you add you get group retained earning as 4800 or you can call it group reserves group reserves Next important calculation we need to do is the non-controlling interest. The amount of non-controlling interest which should be included in the consolidated statement of financial position. So this is, uh, I'm taking it as working three. Yeah, first one was goodwill, group reserves coming to working three which is NCI. How we begin? We start with NCI at date of acquisition. It says NCI at date of acquisition was 3 million. So 3 million, three zeros are eliminated here. Please remember, there are three zeros here, which is eliminated. So three zeros I'm not writing. And then NCI's share in post acquisition retain earnings. Now we know post acquisition retain earning is 2400. And NCI shares, if the parent share is 75%, NCI share will be the remaining, which is 25%. So 25% of this will be 600. The NCI which comes in the consolidated financial statement is 3.6 million. After doing all these calculations, we are good to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position. Let's have a look at it, please. Starting off with the assets, uh, we have investment will never come as I told you this gets cancelled out with these. Okay, so other assets. Yes. Other assets. We have 21 and 18,400. So 21,000 plus 18,400. 39,400 you get. All right, we also calculated goodwill here. So that is an asset, obviously. Goodwill as per working one, which is 5,000. We have no other assets. Other assets we have taken, goodwill we have taken. So let's add this. This is 44,400. This is your total assets. Coming to the equity section, uh, share capital, please remember, always take for parent as it is given here, 20,000. So that is 20. Then we move on to retain earnings. And remember here we have to write the group reserves. So group reserves which we calculated in working number two is 4,800. So group reserve as per working number two is 4,800. Then we also take into consideration the NCI, non-controlling interest, which is as per working three is 3.6. And in the end we have liabilities. Liabilities if you add this is 10 and 6, 16. This is 16. So when you add all these, you get 44,400. Sorry. Now here you need to remember the assets and the liability shows what the group controls. What are the assets? The group controls. What is the liability? The group is liable to. The group. Not the parent, not the subsidiary, the group. And the equity section shows how much, look, how much belongs to the group, how much belongs to the non-controlling interest. So guys, this was the second scenario. We're going to the third and last scenario in which there is a possibility that parents and subsidiary may trade with each other. There may be some intra-group balances. There could be an element of unrealized profit. Let's see what they are how they are calculated and how 
they affect the preparation of consolidated statement of financial position so guys in this third scenario uh, what is happening is alpha company is purchasing 60% shares of beta uh, when it was formed immediately it purchased and the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2021 for both the companies are given here. Uh, property plan and equipment 400 and 100. Investment in beta is 12. Inventories for both is given. Receivable from alpha. Now beta has to receive from alpha. That means beta has sold some goods to alpha. All right. Uh, they also have other receivables 192 for alpha and 58 for beta. These other receivables are outside the group. Likewise, they have cash balances for both, share capital for alpha and beta, which is the parent and subsidiary, retain earnings for both are given, accounts payable, alpha has alpha owes beta 60, and okay, and others, there are accounts payable for outside the group this much. Additional information which is given is fair value of NCI at date of acquisition was 8, Beta sold goods to Alpha valued at 24 with 25% margin. The goods are still in the closing stock of Alpha. Now what is happening here? Yes, we have parent and subsidiary. Obviously, Alpha is purchasing 60% share. So obviously, the control and the investment is more than 50%. That means Alpha is the parent, Beta is a subsidiary. That's okay. And parents and subsidiary can deal with each other. So if they can deal with each other, they can trade with each other. So there is a possibility that uh, if you look at this one, uh, beta has to receive from alpha and alpha has to pay beta. As per IFRS 10, consolidation of financial statement, intra-group balances are to be eliminated. So this 60,000 what alpha owes to beta and beta owes to alpha would be cancelled out and will not be shown in this consolidated statement of financial position, number one. Number two, uh, you know what is IS2 inventories. It says inventory is to be valued at lower of cost or NRV. So when we're talking about lower of cost or NRV, we are talking about being prudent. Here if you look at Beta has sold goods to Alpha. It is an intergroup trading. The value of goods are 24,000. It includes a margin of 25. We need to understand that when we say profits or group profits, profits are what the group earns from outsiders, not from each other. Okay, so although Beta has sold goods to Alpha for 24, which includes a profit of 25, the goods are still in the closing stock of alpha. So the group will only record and recognize profit once the goods are sold to outsiders. If the goods are still in the closing stock, we have to remove the unrealized profit. Unrealized profit means the profit is not realized until the goods are sold. Here we have to make an extra calculation for provision of unrealized profit and we have to carefully remove it from the group reserves and from the closing stock. So let's see how things are done here. Very first calculation, as always, we need to see if there is any goodwill. So let's have a look. So for goodwill, I'm just doing a calculation here just to ensure if it is there. Working one, goodwill. So we start with consideration. Consideration is how much we are paying. So it's very clear here, 12. All right. Do we have any fair value of NCI at date of acquisition? Yes. So fair value of NCI at date of acquisition always add here, which is 8. It comes to 20. Now, we need to see what was the retained earning of subsidiary at the date of acquisition. No information is given here. Normally it is given if it was. If we had any pre-acquisition retained earning, that's given. It's not. That means all these retained earnings, which is given here for subsidiary, is post-acquisition. So less net assets acquired. So that means if there was no pre-acquisition retained earning, the only equity of retail, uh, subsidiary was 20. So 20 minus 20 will give me zero. So there is no goodwill. There is no goodwill. Okay. So I just confirm that there is no goodwill. 
the next step is group reserves or you can call it group retain earnings group reserves or group retain earnings whatever always take the retain earnings of parent 100 percent so retain earning of parent is 294 which i'm taking here then let's talk about the post acquisition retain earnings post acquisition retain earning is 146 but you have to remove the provision for unrealized profit provision for unrealized profit if you look at the closing stock is 24 and it has 25 percent profit in it so how much that comes to 24 is the closing stock and it has 25 percent profit in this which is six that we have to remove so it comes to 140 this is the post acquisition retain earnings and mind you parent has purchased 60 percent so parent has a 60 percent share in this 60 percent of this comes to 84 so when you add these two it comes to 378 this is your group reserves we also have need to calculate non-controlling interest now we need to look at fair value of non-controlling interest at date of acquisition fair value of nci at date of acquisition which is given as eight and also nci share in post acquisition post acquisition retain earnings now we know that the post acquisition retain earning is 140 and if 60 percent share is for parent 40 percent would be for nci which is 56 and this becomes 64 so nci which enters in the consolidated statement of financial position will be 64 so let's prepare the consolidated statement of financial position we start off with property plan and equipment 400 plus 100 that will give you 500 investment i told you this cancels out with this okay so this is not taken inventory is very important please pay attention inventory we have 44 here 36 here 44 for parent 36 for subsidiary but from this we have to minus the provision for unrealized profit which is 6 so we minus 6 so that will 44 plus 30 that will be 76 then we have receivables please remember this 60 get cancelled out with the payable receivables and payables of parents are to be eliminated intercompany balances are to be eliminated as per ifrs 10 okay so i'm not taking i'm only taking receivables from others 192 and 58 so i'm taking receivables from others means outside the group which is 192 plus 58 which is 250 we've got cash let's take cash for both which is 8 plus 30 will be 38 okay and then we need to total this coming to the equity side always remember when you're doing equities okay take share capital of parent always okay which is 200 take the group reserves which we have calculated group reserves 378 take non-controlling interest which we have calculated here 64 now when we come to accounts payable please remember this 60 is cancelled with the receivables okay so we are only left with liabilities from others so we have liabilities from others means outside the group which is 102 plus 118 which will be 220 so please total this is your total equities this is your total assets it comes to 862 
so guys i know consolidation is a very extensive topic i've tried my level best to cover some of the important elements if you have any question or queries relating to consolidation please leave a comment i will respond to you as usual if you like this video please share it with your dear and near one so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time